Now, when the GMAT gives us variables in a problem solving question, it's important to remember that no matter what, all we have to do is pick numbers for or values for X and Y, for which when we multiply them together, X times Y equals one. But they haven't given us any other real constraints on that. And so I'm going to use the number one times one to satisfy this situation and see what it gives me out of this formula down here. So if I put if I plug one in for both X and Y, I would get two to the two squared power over two to the zero power squared. And this is not the same as having uh, two to the zero power squared, by the way, which actually does end up being the same value in this situation, only because we're working with twos in a weird way here, um, both on the top and the bottom. But this is not the same as this. In our situation, you are supposed to treat this as the first step and then apply the answer of that as the exponent to this. Whereas in this situation, you would first multiply the exponents instead of taking it to a power, which is just our exponent rules. So if you need more clarification on that, you should watch one of our videos on exponent rules. But diving back into the formula, we end up with two to the two squared and two squared is four over two to the zero squared and zero squared is one, which gives me basically just two to the four, which is equal to 16. And that gives us answer choice D. Now, because it's problem solving, it must always work out that this gives us a consistent answer every time, no matter what numbers we choose. Otherwise, there's no way that we could possibly know what answer is the right answer uh, if the X and Ys that we choose gave us different values out for this formula. So it must be that no matter what we choose for X and Y, as long as X times Y equals one, we'll always get 16 out somehow. And I don't have to understand how it works. I just have to know that this is the way it does work. And because they didn't tell us X and Y had to be different integers, uh, I was able to go with this uh, one times one scenario, which was super easy. And one of the more difficult questions on a test becomes one of the easiest questions on the test. Answer choice D is our answer here.